things you need to build an arrow. Okay, so in today's show, um, we're going to be talking about things you need to build an arrow. These are the things that I use. You may not want to use all the stuff that I do, but um, yeah, it's just things that I use to build my arrows. So, what do we need? Well, first of all, we need the arrow shafts. The most important part of your build, right here. Okay? Now, I use the Penetrator Arrow that's sold by um, Straight Shooter Custom Arrows. There's also um, Black Eagle um, Zombie Slayers that are good. I believe that the these ones here, though, are a little bit heavier than the Zombie Slayers. Maybe, maybe 10, 12 grains, I'm not sure. I don't know, because um, I don't have any bare shafts of the Zombie Slayer. But these are the ones that I use. I get these in 24 inch, and I cut them down to 20 inches. I pay, I think it's four or five bucks extra or something like that to have them spined. Now, I don't know if the zombie slayers are spined or not. I don't know. Um, but I know I can get these spined. That's why one of the reasons why I, I get them this way. Um, so, you need arrows. You need some sort of cutting tool. Now, I got this uh, Drill Master 2-inch bench top cutoff saw at... Harbor Freight. Eventually, I am going to make, when I don't know yet, a, um, a permanent 20 inch length here. So I can just put it in, shove it in, and be at 20 inches. I don't have to worry about measuring them. So, measuring, you need a measuring tape. Some sort of measuring tape. It doesn't have to be the Stanley 25 foot, you just need just one that's at the 20 inches. So you definitely need that. So this this works great for me. I've seen uh, some DIYs where they've used, uh, they made their own cutting jig with a uh, Dremel tool. Now some cutting jigs, they get a little expensive. And for a lot of us, we want to go the cheapest route. So this is what I use. It works fantastic. I get a straight cut pretty much every time some sort of marker I found that the whiteout this is a metallic marker whiteout it's a um, for clothing I guess seamstress and stuff use, use these I found this to be the best thing for me um, and again it works great because I do I don't know how well you can see it here, but I write on my shafts. I put dots on my shaft and number my shafts while I'm working on them. Um, line up my, let's see, so I get one to twist here. Yeah. And you see right here, this is the opposite of my spine. So I put another dot over here. So, that's what I use these where I can see them and they're clear. Um, so these are kind of, a, you could say that are a black shaft. So a black marker, like a Sharpie, probably wouldn't work. It wouldn't work at all. So something white to get on your shafts. Some sort of cleaner. No polish mover. Best item out there. It cleans really good inside your shaft, cleans your shaft inside and out. You just need a little bit and just rub it on. Sanding block. Uh, the sanding block is good. 
So you just kind of, when you have to cut, just rub it over the edge here to get all the, any sharp things off. And that helps, you know, some, just some sort of sanding block. Does that be a sanding block? It can be something like this. But I recommend stuff like this because sandpaper get a little expensive and this lasts forever. Glue, some sort of glue. Now I'm using this uh, Starbond gap filler thick glue. It's a high performance. It works on your carbon fiber shafts. So you don't have to use this type of glue. There's all sorts of glues out there. It's just your preference on glues. I have this insert here or the shaft or the um, insert thing, insert tool. They use Run it on here, run this into your shaft. You can also use these for removing these tips. Kind of hard to do. It probably would take two people, but you know this is great. If you want to, don't want to get glue all over your hands, you just put it in, shove it down your shaft after you put glue on it. While we're here, inserts. Now, it depends on, it doesn't make any difference what type of insert you want to use. Um, as long as you have some sort of insert. There's 120 grain inserts out there. This is 160 grain. This is 150 grain. And this is 130 grain inserts, which I'll be using in my other, other builds that have different weights at the front, different weights of the shaft, different weights of the, of the arrow. Um, I get I got these from, um, again, from Straight Shooter Custom Arrows. And I'll put links to everything down below. This one here I got out of a Zombie Slayer. Busted up zombie, zombie Slayer. I got that out of. Also, you're going to need the bushing and the knock. So whatever kind of arrow you're making, you can make sure you have a bushing and knock. Okay. Uh, this, this came out of a broken um, penetrator arrow. It's got, this is a 44 ounce, or 40 ounce. This is a 44 grain insert. I got some of these coming. So, if you get these separated, you'll need some sort of um, press. So I have this little uh, vise here. You just stick your, your, your these in your um, inserts and and your um, your bushing and your um, knock. You just get it started. You just put it in. In here, well, this ain't working right now because I got a this one. I don't know, maybe because it's been used. I might have to just sand it down just a tad to get it to go inside. But you want to make sure you line up everything right here. You just use your vise to press it in. A scale. Now, this is the last chance archery scale. I really like it. It seems to be more accurate than my other scale that I had. Um, my weights are coming out a lot better on this. But again, scales, there's a ton of scales out there. Now, the more professional places probably have expensive scales to do your weight, do they do their stuff on. As a DIY, DIY or whatever you're set, well, do it yourself stuff. Um, just something like this would probably just fine. Uh, some sort of uh, scraper, to uh, so so if you screw up, or you're putting new fletchings on, this right here is the thing from Boeing, is fantastic. I really like it. It scrapes off everything really good. Just use here, scrape off your your arrow, and you also have this little um, 
thing here. You just run up and down your shaft. You help clean it off, then you finish it off with your sanding block. Now for your inserts and your uh, bushings and stuff, again, there's all sorts of glues out there. I prefer JB Weld. Um, I found that it works really, really good. Um, I forget what the other one is. It's more of a grayish, but uh, it works really good. But this one here is a plastic bonder, and it works on carbon fiber um, arrows just fine. Of course, something to mix it in. There you go, just something to mix it in. You're going to need, all right, this is a 357 Magnum brush, I think. Uh, but it's a brush to scrape the insides of your arrows. And what that does is put just a small groove in there. So it's that the uh, glue has something to adhesive to on inside your shaft. Another thing you're going to need, of course, is um, fletchings, veins, whatever you want to call them. You'll need these. Uh, if you're doing um, odd, air, uh, odd fletchings, you're going to need to get you know whatever color you want. But you have two of the same color, and your odd fletching is the one that goes down. In your rail um, again whatever your preference is um, I got these and I I'll have to look I, if I find if I can find it I'll put it in my description but uh, these ones that I have here which I need to get more so I have to really I have to look for them I really like and these ones are too Actually, three inches in length and a half inch in height. So I really, I really like these these, these, these uh, fletchings. Um, you can get some bigger ones, but the one, what biggest thing I'm afraid of is getting down in the rail and rubbing here and causing issues on your shot. So these half inch work really good for me. Um, then you're going to need some sort of jig. Um, I had a couple other jigs. Bo Boeing was one of them. And another one, I forget what I had. I did. I like the Boeing, but you have to constantly keep cleaning these up and they still get glue on them. I like the metal uh, because it's easier to clean real easy to clean you know after you, you if you get glue on here because you don't want to keep glue on here you want to keep that glue scraped off and the plastic ones they kind of build up over time so this one right here um, this um, Southland archery supplies vertical fletching jigs all metal all metal so it's sturdy um, it, it's, uh, um, solid, it's heavy, I wouldn't say heavy, heavy, but it's heavy enough to work with. And then your arrow sits in here and it's tight. Okay, so it keeps your arrow straight. Now this one here is a, um, three and four fletching. So, pushing it in. This portion right here pushing it in is a three fletching pulling it out makes it a four fletching okay so and I like it what I like it for is let me just give you guys a quick example let me see if I can get one of these arrows out of here or one of these shafts out of here like I said, this one here has the spine marker right here. Now, all I got to do to line up my spine on the or uh, the index of the odd fletching, I just stick it in the four fletching, the four, line up my 
my mark of my um, um, spine, and then I just turn it 180 degrees. And, oh, I don't have it marked. I don't have this pulled out. So, once I get over to 180 degrees, now I know that my, um, I'm 180 degrees, make my mark, and I can put my fletching on. So, you can make a mark, or if you wanted to, <clears throat> while you're doing it, and you stick this down the side, just for an example, as I said, just just an example. If I wanted to go ahead and put my fletching on, I could do it with no issue, no problem. And then, then all I got to do is set this back to the um, three fletching. Start over. Done. Easy. But I prefer to make marks with my marker it makes it a lot easier okay and this is fully adjustable I can move this with an allen wrench back and forth so oh, let me get my where is it it's down here somewhere I don't think this is the right size no nope, that's not the right one I got the other one over here somewhere. There it is. I can just stick this inside, turn this right or left, and tighten in the arrow. But for these, for these here, it's all the way out. It's not touching, and it's still solidly in here. And it also tightens down right here. Okay. Um, right here is my adjustments for my, um, for my arrows, my straight, set for straight now, uh, if I wanted the one degree, all I got to do is loosen this up, move it by one degree. This goes up to five degrees. So that makes it really, really simple. And the only, the only drawback to the whole thing is when you're adjusting here for your degree, so it's just etched in here and really hard to see, even with glasses on. It's hard to see, so you have to be really, really careful about setting your degrees. But other than that, this jig is fantastic. Um, it zeroes right here for both the four fletching and the three fletching. And you just rotate it and you feel a locking in. It doesn't really lock, it's a ball bearing in there that pops up tells you that you're where you want to be at and you just keep turning it boom done and it's got the markings right here on the on the dial so you can see it it also comes with this uh, level here um, this level is really nice I glued it on here but it tells me if I'm level or not okay and that makes that I don't think that's going to make much of a difference, but it's kind of nice to know that when you're setting it here, I'm on a level surface. Uh, oh, yeah. Stirring sticks. I, prefer, I just use these uh, toothpicks for stirring sticks over here. I put dab on my glue. Um, a mat. You're not, you don't necessarily have to have a mat to work on. You can just work on straight on the table. But I prefer the mat. And let me grab a couple of things over here really quick. Another thing you want to have is you want a rag, a rag handy. Some sort of rag. That's all you need to wipe down your, your um, arrows, uh, dampen on your your um, finger polish remover to, to clean with or whatever. 
just have a good old fashioned rag handy. Also, you'll want to need to have handy is some sort of um, Q-tip um, because you're going after you scrape the inside of your shaft. You need to damp in the in your fingernail polish remover and just run it in your shaft real quick to clean it out and then dry it out. Even though this will dry pretty fast in there, but it just helps move that process along. Uh, anything else? Did I forget anything? No, I don't think so. Oh, with the Star Bond, you guys see me use it. This comes with this uh, um, cap here and has, has these little um, dispensers, I guess you could call them, on here, tips to help out putting your glue on your fletchings. You know, you just dab a little bit, run it down the bead, come back, and just kind of spread it around using that little tube there. That makes a big difference. Um, but that helps out a lot. Uh, I think, of course, you, of course, you're going to need part of your build is your um, oh, fill tips. Uh, you know, you want to have some of those. These ones here, like I said, I got these in on uh, Amazon. They come from China, but they're so far they've been re they're within I think 0 0.3 grains or something like that, which is great. Um, you can also get them in 125 grain. Uh, again, I think these are like 0.3 or something like that difference, and I like them because. It's got that little rubber grommet that goes around it, okay? And that rubber grommet, when you, when you put it in, and you tighten down your, your, your fill tip to your insert, that's pretty solid in there. And it's really, and it, gives, it helps seat it in there and keep it kind of tight so it doesn't back out. Um, the other ones that I have, shoot them once, and I got to tighten them down again. Shoot them again, got to tighten them down again. These ones here, probably you can probably do three or four shots before you have to tighten them down again. So that real rubber gauntlet is a game changer. It works really, really good in holding your uh, field tip onto your um, inserts. And again, I'll put that put these down in the description. It does take a little while to get them because they do come from China. Um, but I, I'm really happy with these. I've had some before uh, in the hundred grain and I had no issues with those. None whatsoever. Okay. And I keep, I have this big hole in my lip. Keep dropping them out. But this, uh, um, Matt here, I got from, uh, what is, comes from Whitewater Archery. It's a, um, a wrap, um, Jigma bobber, and it gives all sorts of measurements and stuff on here for wraps. Because like I said, I thought about doing wraps just for fun to see how that would work, but maybe on the... The five, the be um, the ten point uh, five fifteen, or even the four forty, the wraps have worked pretty good on here because they're not rolling along the rail. Uh, on my five, on my four seventy, this would rub on my rail and it'd probably rub those right off and put a groove in the wrap pretty quick. So um, once I get rich and famous, maybe I'll get the uh, five fifteen and not have to worry about that. Because I think that would be pretty fun, to, the fun thing to try. Okay, so if you guys got any questions for me, uh, just leave this hit me up in the comments. Um, but again, I hope you guys got got something out of this. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, you, 
you can go without this if you don't want it. You can, if you want your, your JBL, you probably, whatever you want to use, because uh, you probably could use this, the Starbond. It'd probably work just fine. Or any other type of glue would probably work just fine. I, um, a jig, because of the jigs, do your research on jigs, okay? Um, I did, and I thought the blowing was going to be just fine, but it didn't work out fine. The thing about this one here, too, if I wanted to permanent mount, permanently mount it, it's got two mounting holes already in here, all ready to go. So, I want, so if I had a shop, I could just put this on, tighten it down, and not have to worry about anything. I just walk over the jig, put stuff for the jig, and it's ready to go. Um, but I don't have a permanent shop or a place to put this. So, uh, And it's got this nice little handle right here. I like that. Um, but yeah. Oh, one more thing. So let's go back to this, this here real quick. So you can see I got my clamp in there. This clamp clamps right to the table. The little slot that it goes into. It keeps this dirty, which is nice. Also, it's got a little groove on the right-hand side here that helps hold your arrows tight in, in, in here. So when you cut, it doesn't move around. That's nice. Like I said, I got this for like 25 bucks compared to 130, 100, 200 bucks for a um, an actual jig. But like I said, I'm going to eventually figure out how I can build uh, you know, something here flat it off here to do my measurements automatically. That is something that's in the pipe dream but I, I eventually uh, that I really want to do. Okay. So again, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, well, I'm not going to do any more uh, builds on camera. I'll just show you my completed uh, builds after I get done with those. I'm going to be starting these here pretty soon. I got to order some more arrows. Um, and just a lot of more. Lot, I'll order a lot more stuff. But once you have a lot of your supplies, it's pretty um, easy to do your build. Um, because supplies can come, you know, buying shafts, buying inserts, buying knocks and bushings. They can get up there a little bit. Like these here are like a, I want to say right around a little over a hundred bucks for six of these. No, 12 of these. So you get 12. Um, then a dozen of these, a dozen of these. So I, I get the, I, these are out of my, um, um, zombie slayers. So I got to find where I can get these. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm rambling now. I shouldn't be doing that. I've been accused of rambling. So anyways, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that all notification bell. Hit uh, uh, the thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And share with your family, friends, and worst enemies. And thank you for watching. And remember, these episodes are dedicated to my son. And thank you for watching Utah Crossbow Hunter.